Hi everyone. Last night I stayed up late to watch Ringo Starr on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Now I didn't really have to do that because it's going to be repeated and it has been repeated. You can find it now on YouTube. Uh, but I like to see it when it's first on. I like to see it like kind of like fresh broadcast live, if you will, first time. So that's why I tune in. The only thing is I should have waited because I have to sit through Jimmy Kimmel's unfunny monologue most of the time. And, of course, if you watch the video later, you don't have that. I don't like taking chances of missing Ringo the first time, so I sit through the whole thing. It was very unfunny, the monologue. And I tell you, not only was it unfunny, but it seemed to me like the writers were in a time machine and thought it was like five or six years ago. I mean, you know, if this is not 2016 or 2017, this is 2022, and there's lots of funny, incompetent, low-hanging fruit to make fun of today. Let's get with the times. But having said that, let's talk about when Ringo mercifully came on, all right? Now, Ringo, right off the bat, you have to say, as we all do, looks absolutely fabulously fantastic let's put it that way that's a phrase i'm gonna coin all right i mean the man is going to be 82 this year on july 7th he looks great uh you know he's got his hair dyed and it looks great on him and his beard dyed and it looks great on him he wears that well and uh he's letting his hair grow long these days and i swear he looked like he just stepped out of the Twickenham studio from 1969 in the Get Back film. I mean, that's how good he looks. So, wow, is that incredible. Every time we see him, we're amazed, and we have to feel secure in knowing that Ringo is inspiration to us all, that you don't have to be a crotchety old man when you're in your 80s, right? So that was terrific. Now, of course, there's some familiar ground that we have to hear about. Uh, I was hoping this wouldn't happen, but it did happen. Uh, eventually, Jimmy Kimmel was talking to Ringo about how much he liked the Get Back film, and in particular, he spoke about the scene where George Harrison and Ringo are kind of composing together the song Octopus's Garden, and wanted to know, you know how that came about, that song. And uh, here it is. We had to hear the story again. That's become a joke. It's so often repeated. Ringo talking about that story of how he was feeling very left out of the Beatles, felt like he wasn't really important. And so he kind of walked out on the White Album and he knocked on John's door and said, you know, I feel you three guys are really close and I'm on the outside. And John said, I thought it was you three. Then he went over to Paul's house and knocked on the door and said, you know, Paul, I feel like you three are very close and, you know, I'm just kind of on my own and it's not coming together. And Paul says, I thought it was you three. Then he said, well, the heck with this. I'm going to Sardinia, where he went and ultimately wound up writing Octopus's Garden. But I'll say, even though the story is the same we've always heard, I don't know about any of you out there now. I mean, I've, I've had every interview with Ringo from all over the world, different countries, on all kinds of DVDs back there. And I've heard this story many times. Maybe I was missing one where he already told this particular part of the story, but to me, this part I'm going to talk about was new. I never heard this. I don't remember hearing it, where he says that uh, he had a nanny for his son, Jason, and the nanny was carrying Jason, and then she, she said to Ringo, take, take the baby, because she had an octopus wrapped around her leg. That I'd never heard before, but then he continued with the rest of the story about how he was served octopus for lunch, and he was, like, disgusted by the idea of eating octopus. And, no, the person assured him, hey, you know, let me tell you about how, how nice octopus are, you know. They actually have a wonderful collection of rocks and shiny things, and they make a garden out of it. Ringo says he was so stoned it sounded wonderful, and he, and he wrote the song. But anyway, yeah, so we had to hear that story again, although the part with the octopus around the leg was new. Uh, also in this, we, uh, had a little discussion about a humorous scene in the Get Back film where Ringo farts and, uh, you know, didn't want to own up to it. And, uh, that, of course, transpired, uh, with a, a funny story that came out of it about how the Beatles would always do that. I guess it's, you know, guy humor, right? You know, nobody wanted to own up whenever they'd be together in close quarters and uh, so forth. And that inspired Kimmel to ask 
uh, who was the most gassy beetle, <laughs> you know, what should I tell you, R Ringo said Paul, okay, personally, I think Ringo is the gassiest beetle, because he eats a lot of that spicy, or, well, I don't know about spicy, but, he, um, uh, vegetables, forget it, you know, he eats a lot of vegetables and kale and stuff like that, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't like spicy food, that's what that is, but anyway, it was just a joke, and he said that he, he has to say Paul, because, the other two aren't here, so it's not fair kind of thing. Something like something like that. And, you know, the rest of it was pretty much uh, uh, Ringo saying that he's looking forward to going on tour again. You know, he wasn't able to tour the last couple of years because of the pandemic. And he's happy. He said, thank God, you know, he wants to get out there and tour. And he's looking at, you know, touring this May and June. And that's if everything permits and we don't have anything crazy going on with the pandemic, you know, which is, uh, I, I hope everything stays better like it's been, that he can do this. I'm supposed to see Ringo myself. I had tickets going back to 2020 that were held over to 2021 and now held over again to 2022. So I may be able to see Ringo again. Uh, my tickets are still good. I think they're paid for already. So I should be seeing him. We'll see how that goes. And he's also talking about how Edgar Winter uh, is now added to the band. You know, it's the same band he's had before, but plus Edgar Winter, really. And that was good. Uh, the, he was here basically to talk about a new book that he has, which I've just ordered. I hadn't ordered it before the show. I ordered it now. The book is called Lifted. And it's available from Julian's Auctions. And when I say Julian, I'm not talking about Julian Lennon. I'm talking about Julian spelled with an E. J-U-L-I-E-N. And all uh, monies generated from this are going to the uh, Lotus Foundation charity that Ringo uh, favors. So that's nice. And uh, yeah, I went on there and ordered it. And uh, you can get the $495 version, which I did not get, which has Ringo's autograph included. Well, you can get a $59, $60-ish version. And after, once you get to the shipping and everything, it's more than that. But anyway, I went ahead and ordered that. And uh, also, Jimmy went through some of the pictures. We saw maybe four photos, something like that. Four, I think about four photographs from the book. Out of the four photographs that were shown, I recognized three already. One of them I hadn't seen, the other three I've seen before. So I don't know how many of these are new photographs or unique to Ringo's collection or anything like that. But it's a, it's co-written by R R Ringo and also, geez, David, I'm sorry, the name escapes me. I apologize, David, uh, another author. They, they kind of work on it together. And I would say that uh, this is going to be uh, interesting to get. Uh, I like the I like the packaging. I like the cover shot and everything. So this should be pretty good. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that just about covers it. Ringo still up and about. I will say one thing. Ringo, as I said, looks fantastic for 82 years old, practically 82, almost 82. But you know, I'm going to mention something that I noticed, and I only say this not to criticize Ringo, but because. I'm trying to give you a report, an update, an observation. And just as a fan who's watched Ringo, as I say, in solo interviews from 1970 till now, to not, uh, last night, I would say that his voice is starting to seem a little bit, a little more like slurring, just slightly like an older man's voice, maybe the teeth and everything like that. Nothing major. Hey, look, I admit it right here. Please, when I'm 82 years old, if I look and sound half as good as Ringo, I will be grateful eternally grateful but i'm just telling you that as an observation because i have a beatles related channel okay ringo's still at the top of his game and fantastic for his age uh yeah it was a lot of fun with ringo so thanks everybody talk to you soon